this reminds and Muslims. me. Last week I had Gary Kasparov on the show. Okay, he's running for president against Putin. And I said, Putin has an 80% approval rating. And he said, how do you know? You don't. And he was right. How do I know what the approval rating of Putin is in a police state? Anyway, we should talk to people in burkas. And luckily, we have some today, because <laughs> you're in for a treat. We have been chosen here at Real Time to host the fifth annual fall fundamentalist fashion show. <laughs> And you are going to love this. Could we have our first model, please? And <laughs> I'll describe it. All right. Sleek and stylish in this wool blend. Najiba is hot, hot, hot. <laughs> and not just from wearing a suffocating tarp in the desert. This outfit just screams, look out, world. I'm a woman of the 12th century. <laughs> Turn heads without losing yours in this sizzling Saudi sheath and be the wife that he calls for tonight and every night. Here comes lovely Anon. Anon. <laughs> Anon is wearing a daring French cut with a plunging eye slit. It comes in black and dark black. And it leaves absolutely everything to the imagination. Guaranteed to get your man so hot, he'll want to crack you on the ankle with a long stick. <laughs> Whether you're on the go or simply knowing your place, nobody does repression like the House of Saw. Here's Kalia. Isn't she just scrumptious in this business casual abaya by Donna Karan? <laughs> it's a throwback pullover that says, I'm too sexy for my Shiite. <laughs> Dress it up for morning prayers or dress it down for midnight stonings. <laughs> this one says, my mullah brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> Available at Kmart by Isaac Jihadi. <laughs> Here's lovely Gamal in a first look from Saudi Arabia's hottest designer, Muslim Dior. <laughs> he used to be Christian Dior, but he converted. <laughs> You'll be proud to walk five steps behind your husband. <laughs> in, this, in this ensemble that screams Islamo-fashion. <laughs> By the way, Gamal is the winner of Saudi Arabia's next top model, and I think you can see why. <laughs> and finally, here's something a little different, a coquettish outfit that showcases the girl inside the woman inside the stifling female containment unit. <laughs> it's first-class clothing for second-class citizens. And it shows off your curves in all the right places, the top of your head, your shoulders, and absolutely nowhere else. <laughs> when you hit the town in this, the only thing you'll have to be ashamed of is the unclean vessel of satanic temptation underneath. Perfect for a trip to the desert or the sea or a Djibouti call. <laughs> What? These are all the reasons why a woman would never want to be dressing like this if she had a choice. You yeah, I, I really don't right think there. it's it's there. Do you see anybody converting choice. here that wants to dress like but that? It, the rest but, of the and life. in fairness to the general, I mean, if someone does choose in a free society to do that as a religious statement, I would defend their right to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely right. And and it, that's not the question. Uh, the question is not even respecting Islam. It's re it's it's respecting men's brutality and control and possession of women. Of women. And that is right. That's and wrong. And the reason why breast cancer is such a problem in this part of the world is because they don't report it to doctors. Because, one, they don't want to... A woman can't go to a male doctor who's not her husband and have him see his bre her breast. That's ridiculous. And, of course, there are not a hell of a lot of female doctors in that part of the world. So what Laura Bush said, the cure for cancer can come from a researcher in Washington or a young doctor in Riyadh. Yeah, I'll hold my breath for that. <laughs>